what I've done, I've cut out a couple of um, patras or pateras or whatever you want to call. They're a, um, a design that I think the, 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 the history behind it, it is a shallow platter that the Romans used to use in Roman times. And then in about the 1700s, it became uh, incorporated in plasterwork in ceilings with uh, Kent and I don't know if Kent was around there, but Brothers Adams, yeah, William Kent, Chippendale, they started using this particular design in plasterwork on ceilings. And later on, it found its way into furniture through marquetry and veneers. So I've done one. And I thought I would show you uh, not so much how to cut them out because that's just great scroll saw work, but how to get the finished article. That's all the pieces laid out there. Then I will burn them, which I'm about to do now. And we'll lay them in and see what the finished design comes up like. Pretty excited. All I use is sand, uh, which is um, ordinary uh, river sand. It's very fine, so I guess you could use playground sand and just get all the big chunky bits out. And an insulated spoon, which is really, really handy. Longer handle is even better. And a pair of tweezers. I personally prefer these tweezers because the pressure, they self-pressurise. I think they're called reverse tweezers. So I can hold a piece of veneer and I don't have to put pressure on it. Whereas if you're doing a lot of scorching and a lot of burning, you'll find with the normal tweezers, after a while you start to lose your thumb feeling. That's the basic thing. This is just an ordinary gas cylinder. This is one part of the inside, and then I have another one that I've already completed. So we'll see how these go together. Uh, the first thing I do with this is get some of the book binding contact that you can buy from news agents or office supply works. It works a treat. Make sure your work area is pretty clean. You don't have to do it this way, but when there's a lot of little, little pieces, this is a really great way of holding all your work together. And you're working with this, we're working from the back. If I do a, a basic marketry course, I actually get people to work from the front because it's a lot easier. And that's how that looks. So as I scorch these pieces, I'm going to place them in the places they're meant to go. So, all right, let's light the fire. Okay, now we're starting to rock and roll. You can see that's starting to burn on the end. Give it a couple more seconds. But if I had it that, that colour and just left it like that, I would find when I come to clean it up and rub it back, well, we'll actually do a test bit. I'll rub it back with sandpaper. I've taken nearly all of the colour out of it. So always go darker than you think you need. That's a good colour. So that's what we'll do. And the reason for the spoon is I then pick up the sand and dip it in the spoon and I can regulate how much heat gets on. So let's do the first one. There we go. I'll do the other end. And believe me, that veneer is very, very hot. That, that wasn't meant to happen. I've got a little bit too much flame out and it actually burnt the, the edge of the timber. So I'll turn that down a bit. So that's the first bit. Then I've got number one marked here. And I know that's the number one bit. So then I just slide that in there. 
A little bit of a repair to do later on. You can just see there's a little bit of light showing through there. Where it got burnt, which it shouldn't have. Anyway, we'll move on to the next one. These things happen. Can't be helped. These are really fun to do. And I mean, you can buy them for, I don't know, maybe $15. It definitely costs more than fifteen dollars to make, but there's that satisfaction of knowing you've done something that not everyone does. Let me put this one in. See how that just stays there, so it doesn't doesn't fall out. It's like watching paint dry or grass grow, but the end result. is something that's quite beautiful. And different timbers burn at different rates. So, um, you know, if you get one timber and you've got to keep it in there for a while, don't think that applies to all species of timber because it, it doesn't. That's a nice snug fit. So now I've just got to put these little bits in. It's great if you can remember where they go and you have them numbered, but because they, uh, they're all different shapes, they will only fit in the hole they came out of, so it's not really that hard. It's just a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, I suppose. These are great designs for cabinets or serving trays or boxes or whatever. They're just so much fun to do. Okay. Now, you can have a look at that.